my friends in Monet Cafe, this is artist Susan Jenkins, and I am so glad to be sitting here back at my tabletop easel. My other easel is up here, and um, I have not been able to paint for a little while because of just some um, things going on in my life, uh, company coming in town, my husband was sick for a while, he's much better, praise the Lord, and um, I am now sneaking in a moment to just do a little painting, kind of uh, getting warmed up again, and I just wanted to kind of share with you what I do to, to get warmed up again when you've been away from your easel a while. It's good not to get too serious too quickly. So what I'm going to do today is I've taken um, some of my watercolor, it's a pad, a watercolor, I think it's called a block of watercolor paper. I have it here um, to show you. This is a uh, an older one that I have, but this is uh, an example of it. It's um, basically a block of watercolor paper that's all glued together. Now, why would they do that? The reason is because if you've worked with watercolor paper, and I'm using this for pastels like I've done in the past, um, watercolor paper buckles. And um, when you add the water, um, it will warp. And a lot of times you have to tape it down. Well, when you have it on this block, um, you're able to paint on it and the block is already adhered. Each page is already almost like taped down on the sides. So you're able to use it without it buckling. And then when you're finished, you've got a nice little corner or right in here where you basically can get just like a little X-Acto blade or the edge of a palette knife and just kind of start peeling back that one sheet um, to peel it off. And that way you don't have any buckling. So that's what I've done here. And what I'm gonna do to warm up is I've just blocked out um, a few shapes. I already had a pre-cut piece of pastel board I had made, um, a five by seven, I believe this is a six by four. This is another five by seven landscape um, size. And this is just a random little square piece I had. So I just filled up the watercolor paper with some, some sizes that I typically work in. And I thought, I'm just gonna get some inspiration from Paint My Photo. Um, it is the pmp-art.com website. You guys, if you've been on my channel before, you've seen how I use the, this website to get reference images. And this is just my, uh, my photo um, album that I've already pre-saved photos to. This is, uh, I think this one is Fields. And so I have a bunch of photos already pre-saved so I don't have to sit down and go through all the photos and waste my time. You know, usually I get so into looking at the photos I never end up painting. So this is a great way for me just to get to work really quickly. So I'm just gonna quickly pick some of these images and start painting. And the great thing about doing it this way is, um, like I said, again, the purpose is just to warm up, to get back into things, is that you don't take it so seriously. This is going to be fun. And a lot of times when you have that attitude and that approach, it comes out better than when you do take things seriously. So my technique that I'm going to be using for this is some of you guys have seen my videos where I actually use the clear gesso to paint on the watercolor paper to give it the grit the surface so I can apply pastels to it. It will hold to it. Right now, if I just took pastels and started painting on this, it would hold a little, but it would fall right off and I wouldn't get any layering. So that's why we use the clear gesso. But what I often do first, which is what I'm going to do today, is I'm gonna do an underpainting. I'm gonna keep it free and loose. I love using these Neocolor Water Soluble. They're actually called Wax Pastels. I really don't know why they're called wax pastels, but they work great for getting an underpainting down. They look literally like coloring crayons, like Crayola crayons. And uh, I break mine up a lot just to use them in different shading and things. So um, what I do is, you'll see, is I'll do a quick little sketch underpainting. I'll wet it with water. Again, this won't buckle as bad because it's on a, a block. Um, and then after that dries, I will paint on this clear gesso to give it the grit, and then I can use the pastels on top. So I'm giving too much explanation. I need to just get to it right now, and we're gonna have fun. I've missed you guys, and I'm very happy to see the Facebook Monet Cafe art group growing, and wow, what amazing comments I'm getting from you guys, and I love it as much as y'all do. So anyway, if you want to um, ask to join that group, that would be great. You do have to ask to join, but just mention that you, there's three questions it'll ask you, but one of the questions is how did you find out about this group? Just say you saw it on, you know, Susan's uh, Monet Cafe channel or Monet Cafe on YouTube, and um, someone will very likely 
um, accept you into the group. Okay, so let's get started on this and I'm ready to have fun. I've got to hurry because I got an art student coming later. Okay, here we go. I apologize that my um, camera ran out of um, space <laughs> and so I have a couple of spots at the beginning of this that did not get all of my footage. So in this uh, particular spot I have already sketched in with the wax pastels the underpainting and now here flash <laughs> like magic it, this is where I had applied the water. Now I'm going to go over to the other one and the same thing happens but don't worry you have two more sections to watch me actually apply the wax pastels and the water. And, mm, while this one was drying, that's probably already dry, I've uh, sketched in this one um, reference image of these beautiful flowers and uh, again using the wax pastels and now I'm just going to work on um, getting the water in. I'm going to be a little bit more particular with the petals with this one. Not all of them. I might go ahead and get those in with the smaller brush right now. So right now I'm going to work on these petals. Again, I got a decent amount of water on here. I don't care if it drips. It's okay because it makes it look more impressionistic. As you can see, like I said, the brightness of these really shows up <clears throat> when you apply the water. Oh, look how gorgeous that is. And again, I don't want to get too fussy with this because then it's going to lose that spontaneity. That's the trick. Keeping things somewhat um, accurate with um, the way flowers really grow, but at the same time getting that looseness. That's why I think this watercolor approach works because when you load up your um, brush with, oops, I'm getting into that one. You load up your brush with um, enough water. That's a trick I had to learn. How much is too much and how much is not enough. But when you get just the right amount, it does create those loose edges. That's another video I want to do at some time talking about lost edges, it's called, where there's really no lines in nature. Um, Oh, these are just little short ones here. Um, things just have a an edge more than a line and the edge is created by whatever value is next to it. I'll save that for another lesson but it's a really important lesson in art. All right, probably need to move this tape now over to this side to protect this guy here. And again, this one, um, you need to uh, recognize, or I do too, <laughs> that um, flowers aren't always going to have, even though they're the same flower and they're probably the same color, they're not the same color in nature depending on where they are in the shadows or in the light. And um, if you paint them all the exact same color, pink, or the center's all the same, it's going to look very amateurish. So you need to constantly be checking those values. I know I talk about value all the time, but it is so, so very important. All right, so we got a general idea of these, and I probably have these even too fixed right now, but um, it's okay, because again, this is just for a warm up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get in behind some of these, and then this one will get a little more blurry as I add the water, which is okay. I'm using the smaller brush here because I need to kind of get in between those petals at least a little bit. And I kind of like this, getting uh, four paintings going at once. It's uh, Again, it's going to um, help me to stay very loose. And again, I want to show you here what I'm doing. When I dip this in the water, I'm just dabbing it just a little so I get most of that water off, but not too much of it. Oops, I really got on that flower. That's okay. Some of the flowers you want just as hints. Um, it's just a hint that it's there. It doesn't have to be um, 
the one that's popping out as the star. Okay, so we're getting this one just about ready to have some fun with it. And I do have some white still showing, which is okay. I'm not going to worry about that too much. All right, and I'll reestablish my darks. Um, with either some pastels or acrylic inks or something. Okay, so there's number two. Time to work on number three. All right, with this one, I really don't have a lot of time because I've got an appointment I've got to get to. Um, but what I'm going to do here is just to sort of get this building accurate. Sometimes um, I like to sketch holding my pencil like this. Sometimes if things are uh, intricate and have to get to something, sometimes I have to hold it, you know, like this. But um, I like to hold it like this because it helps keep me um, things to look more sketchy and I often will use my other hand just as a, a prop you know to keep my hand steady but I'm going to get in the basics of this building here in this one and um, even though I don't like the fact that this roof line is kind of right here in the center see here's a situation where I can't hold my hand up because I don't have enough room down here even though I don't like it right in the center um, it is Okay, because um, I have this horizon line back here down in a, actually it's a much lower third like this, which I like. And then I've got a grouping of trees in here, which is, comes down kind of low. And so the trees are kind of in here. And this roof line, see now I can correct this a little bit, comes up, comes down. Looking at big shapes again, and across. And you know, I actually love painting flowers and trees for the fact that if you get something a little off, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> but you want to get, if you're doing anything that is uh, structural, then you definitely want to get your uh, angles right and your perspective and everything right. So, um, but at the same time, if you get it too perfect, then you've lost that sketch, sketcherly, painterly look again. All right, these trees actually come in front of that building, so this is just a hint, a little hint of this building. You almost don't even see this edge, but um, this value is going to be darker in here on this side. And then we got little shimmery things in the roof line. Okay, now to time to sketch. I actually think I'm going to do this building. Let's see here. It's really dark, and so are these trees. Get my darkest dark for the trees. trees in the distance back here. I'm just going to kind of give an idea of that. The sky is really what's gorgeous in here and I actually I wish I had a longer format here. All right let me get this building. I'm just going to go a little crazy with this just to get the, the general idea of this. This side is even darker.
Alrighty, so now I have my fourth one I will be working on and I think I'm going to do for this one, it's just got this brilliant, beautiful sky. It's a darker reference photo, um, more of a moody uh, late evening or late afternoon feel. And I think I'm going to combine some of the Neo Color Wax Pastels also with a little bit of uh, watercolor. These watercolors I think come out sometimes a little more brilliant. And uh, so I'm going to play around with this one now and see what I get. Again, these are just for uh, having fun. Sometimes you have to do that. Don't get so serious about all of your artwork. All right, here we go. actually going to add some <clears throat> watercolor to this one too. I feel like it wasn't bold enough, so I'm just going to enhance it a bit. Alright, with all of these dry now, I think I'm going to just go ahead and start working on this one because I have the reference photo pulled up. But what I did is I just quickly picked out some pastels that uh, look um, accurate to a degree for the reference image. Um, again, I'm doing this really quickly, so I might grab another color or two, but this is again just for the point of getting warmed up and loose. Oh, I didn't do the gesso. <laughs> I can tell right away I need to put the gesso down. Let me do that. All right, now I'm going to be applying the clear gesso to all of these um, so that I have um, some tooth to the paper to be able to apply the pastels. And this again is just going to be loose and sloppy and free, kind of like the uh, underpaintings that I did. And you'll notice that they do smear a little bit, but I actually kind of like that. You get a nice, uh, just a impressionistic type of a background. All right, there's one. I'm gonna wipe this off a little to get some of the color off. And here's two. And again, the purpose of an underpainting even though they can be just really loose and free, is to cover up that white stark paper. It gives more of a loose, uh, I'm gonna keep this going sideways, interesting feel to it. And to get those big shapes in kind of as a, a guide, it's a general guide. Okay. I'm just putting it on the little foam brush. And uh, typically I'm going top to bottom, again, because sometimes I have some lighter colors at the top and uh, I don't want them to get um, muddied up by the darker colors. I am wiping this brush off. I have a little piece of noobs print here and I'm just sort of 
wiping it off to get um, some of the darker color off of it. All right, last one. All right, so I'll just let this dry and get started. All right, I've given myself a timer, I just set in my kitchen, of 15 minutes to work on each one of these. Um, again, just to keep it quick and loose. And uh, I have picked out um, some pastels here. I may have to grab a couple more. I don't think I have enough uh, light values for the sky. But um, anyway, 15 minutes, I better get going. <laughs> Right, now I'm going to start working on the next one and again I have set my timer at 15 minutes so I better get going.
I actually did this one more in like, I think it was more like 12 minutes, 11 or 12 minutes. Um, and I think I'm working even faster, which is probably a good thing because I'm not really happy with the, the real bumpy texture of this. I'm not, it's not working as, as good as it did when I applied the gesso to uh, a different watercolor paper. This one is a lot more textured. Um, so the point of this is really, like I said, just to get loosened up and to have some fun. So I actually already set the timer to do them even more quickly. I'm going to do this one um, in, I set the timer for 10 minutes, but I've probably already run out of that time. So anyway, here I go again, more fun. And I'm just gonna work with the pastels I have already here because I don't really wanna get up and, and fuss about getting other ones. So, all right, time to get started again. All right, I'm gonna do this last one now and I'm probably gonna do this one really fast because I don't really love my image that I cropped. <laughs> and um, so I'm just gonna play around with it. Now, I didn't set my timer, but I'm probably gonna do this one faster than the other ones. And my crop changed, so I gotta change some things real quickly. Thank you. 
I don't normally blend with my finger, but this, because of the texture, is not blending well at all. With uh, Even if I take a hard pastel, which is my typical approach to blending, it's just not blending. And I want the sky to look further. I want to push it back. But what I am doing, if in the rare time you have to use your finger, I'm cleaning it off each time so it doesn't muddy up the colors quite. You see it's already muddied them up a little bit. But anyway, again, this is just a study, not an important serious piece. Sort of like a little bit of that tealish green in there. It's kind of what's in the underpainting anyway. And I don't know, it's just kind of interesting to me. I wish I had it a tad darker. Oh, I do. Here's a little more. It's a little darker here. And it's usually a good idea if you have a color that you're using that's not anywhere else in the painting usually a good idea to introduce it at least a couple of other spots. Mm -hmm. I need a little more of this dark maybe here. These are those little foreground, they look almost like cattails or what's that called? Sawgrass? And um, I don't want to overdo it actually already this is the heavier side I probably should have gone lighter on this side and heavier on this side but again getting a little too serious for a study yeah I can use this and tone these down over here okay and I don't like to have a total border across my painting so I typically try to introduce um, uh, little openings here and there so that it's not like a barrier to the painting. All right, now I'm just going to get some of those cattails, and all I have is this for the darkest dark are these chunky Terry Ludwig, so I can't get probably as small as I need, but just a couple of little indications is all you need. Sometimes you want one higher than another one, and you don't want them lining up in a straight line so all right so here we go with our final little warm-up paintings just to get loose and and work quickly as you can see when i started working this one i took the most time on and it probably looks the most fussy <laughs> and uh, i gradually decreased my time as i went around um uh, i'm not sure this one might have been the least amount of time or maybe this one and again these are just to work quickly and to kind of get back into the swing of things when you haven't been painting for a while and what would I do differently I think from here on out I will probably work on a less coarse piece of watercolor paper as you can see I really got the texture in there but you know if you like texture then you know you might want to use this technique but anyway you can see how quickly you can pop these out and uh, and just get kind of warmed up and have some fun we don't need to always be so so serious about our artwork this is about just exploring and having fun and uh, just learning more as we go. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, uh, you can find it at Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. You will have to ask to join, but just say that you saw um, or you learned about it from the YouTube channel Monet Cafe. So anyway, guys, thanks so much. And I hope you learned something. Happy painting.